Hi, I'm Mark Needham with Startree, and in this video we're going to learn how to filter data streams during ingestion into Apache Pinot. Oh, this is something that we'd want to do if our stream has more messages than we want to ingest. So it's not replacing the job of a stream processor, but for simple filtering this approach works quite well. So we're going to have a look at an event stream using KCAT. Now this event stream contains uh, different types of flight related events. And once we've got it from KCAT, we're going to pipe it through JQ and group and count the number of each type. So we've got that in the message type field. And so you can see it comes back. So it's mostly flight schedule events, but we've also got flight gate change, delay, cancellation, and arrival. Let's zoom in on one of those. So just the arrival. So again, we'll do our KCAT command. And this time we're just going to get one record of the flight arrivals. And you can see it comes back and so we've got the message type, we've got a flight ID, we've got the airline, the departure airport, the arrival airport, and a bunch of other information about the flight as well. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a flight arrivals table in Apache Pinot. So what we need to do first is create a schema. And in this case, all of our fields are dimensions. So you can see we've got the message type, the flight ID, the airline, and so on. And then the two date fields that we had, so the scheduled arrival time and the actual arrival time are there as date time. Uh, fields. Now let's have a look at our table config. So the table config, so it's going to be a real-time table. We're going to call it flight arrivals. The schema again is flight arrivals. And if we look down a little bit, you can see we've got, we're, we're getting the data from Kafka, the events table. So we're pointing it at that events table. And if we scroll down a bit more, we can see we've got the filter function. So under ingestion config, filter config, filter function. Now this might seem a bit unintuitive at first, but the way that it works is that, is that we're basically return it, like creating some sort of function and it needs to return a predicate. So it needs to be true or false. And true means the record is going to be excluded. So it's going to be gone. Uh, so in this case, what we need, what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to get, check the message type. Is it equal to arrival? So if it was equal to flight arrival, we get a zero. So we need to check that it's not zero so that it will get rid of all of the non-arrival messages. And that's like something just to keep it um, uh, in, in mind. Because if, you, if you're seeing some weird results, it might be you've got that the wrong way around. What we'll do now is we'll create uh, the table. So we're going to call the add table command. We'll pass in the schema file and the table config file. And then we'll wait a few seconds and we can see that our flight arrivals table has now been created. If we now come over to the Pinot UI, uh, we can see we've got our flight arrivals table. Let's just click on that. And you can see it brings back a bunch of those flight arrivals. And so that's worked quite well. So it's only kept the arrivals in and everything else is gone. Let's now do something a little bit more complicated. So this time we're going to ingest only the big flight delay. So where there's been a delay of more than one hour. So again, let's get back to our terminal and we're going to call the KCAT command and this time we're going to filter it just to get the flight delay. So you can see we get slightly different uh, result, uh, slightly different fields rather coming back. So we've got the flight ID, the airline again, but this time we've got a scheduled departure time and then we've got the delayed departure time as well as the reason for that delay. Let's get that data into Pinot. So again, we're going to create our schema. So again, everything is dimension fields apart from those two dates uh, that are going to be date time fields. And now let's have a look at the table config. So again, big delays, real time table, ingesting from that same event stream. If we then scroll down, we've got our filter function. Now this one's a little bit more complicated than the first one that we saw. Um, so what we can see the first expression. So if it's not delay, exclude it. And then the second one, uh, so we've got an or, uh, if the delay departure time minus the scheduled departure time is less than 60, exclude that as well. And we're defaulting those to zero so that it will give us a result of zero if it happens to be a non-flight delay event. Otherwise we'll, we'll get an exception. So we do need that, uh, that coalesce in there as well. If we now add this table, so again, pass in the schema, pass in the table, and then let's run that command and give it a few seconds. And once that's done, let's come over again to the Pinot UI. And you can see we've now got two tables. Let's click on the big delays one and you can see we get back like a bunch of those delays. Let's just customize the query a little bit so that we can actually compute the delay itself. So we're gonna write that query, we'll pull back all the fields and then we're gonna just do a little computation at the end to get the delay in minutes. And you can see there are, I mean, these, obviously these are imaginary flights, but you can see we've got some quite long delays there. We've got a 92 minute delay, 118 minute delay. I wouldn't fancy being in the airport uh, for, that, for that much extra time. Uh, and that's the end of this video in which we've learned how to do some basic filtering during ingestion in Apache Pinot. So give it a try and let us know how you get on and I'll see you in the next video.